So this is the OnePlus 6. It is the most ambitious phone the company has ever designed, and it takes a lot of design cues from the rest of the industry, but it still feels definitively OnePlus. Like with any other OnePlus phone, most of the changes in this iteration are happening on the outside. OnePlus went with an all-glass body this time around and even added a layer of film on the outside, which gives it an interesting silky feeling. Now, I am a bit nervous about all-glass bodies because cracks are a lot worse than little dings in the aluminum. OnePlus sent me a bunch of really, really nice cases, but I think I'm gonna go naked this time around because I wanna see how it holds up to average use. Now, if you look at the back of the phone, you'll find dual cameras, just like last year's iteration, but this time they've been rotated about 90 degrees. These cameras are 16 and 20 megapixels, just like they were in the 5T, but they actually have 19% bigger pixels, so they should do better in low light circumstances. The main camera even has optical image stabilization, so your video and photos are going to be a lot more stable. OnePlus has even thrown in some slow motion video modes, which will let you record at 4K 60fps, 1080p 240fps, or 720p 480fps. The selfie camera is 16 megapixels again, but the company is promising an upgrade to a portrait selfie mode shortly after this phone launches. The selfie camera is sitting right inside, well, you guessed it, a notch. OnePlus knows this was a questionable design decision, but they did it because they really think that extra bit of screen is worth it. If you do use it, that extra bit of screen equates to a 19 by 9 aspect ratio, as opposed to the 18 by 9 aspect ratio of the OnePlus 5T. OnePlus does know that a lot of people really don't like this notch though, so they're gonna give you an option to fill it in if you wanna do that. Now, that screen is 1080p, again. Am I annoyed? No, again. 1080p looks totally fine if you have a quality AMOLED display, and I really think that people have started to care less and less over the years. Whatever AMOLED panels OnePlus has been sourcing have been consistently great, so until I start seeing some pixelation, this resolution works perfectly fine for me. For I.O., we've got a power button, volume rockers, notification slider, bottom firing speakers, USB-C port, and yes, the headphone jack is still there. The I.O. of OnePlus phones hasn't really changed since the company started, but I think they're right to keep these ports for at least another generation. You'll probably notice that fingerprint reader is oblong this time, kind of like the Galaxy S9. OnePlus told me they did this as a return to roots of sorts, because all the other phones in their line except for the OnePlus 5T had fingerprint readers of this shape. On a software front, not a lot has changed here. This is still Oxygen OS running Android 8.1, though you do have the option of trying the Android P beta. There are a few minor software tweaks to things like gaming mode, which can do things like limiting bandwidth to apps in the background, or limiting FPS or resolution while you're playing games to save your battery. More changes to the software will probably be coming in the future, but for now, this is more of a hardware update. Now, since this phone is all glass, you'd think that it had wireless charging, right? Well, no, it doesn't. OnePlus told me that dash charge is so much better than wireless charging that they really didn't deem it necessary, but I would have liked to see that option here because they're using those materials. Now this phone isn't IP rated, so it's not technically water resistant, but they told me that they did their own internal testing to make sure that this thing can survive drops in puddles or even something like the toilet. The specs of this phone are probably the most respectable in any Android phone ever. We've got Qualcomm's latest Snapdragon 845 processor, six to eight gigabytes of RAM, and 64, 128, or 256 gigabytes of storage. OnePlus has always been known to pack these things with the best specs on the market, and they've definitely delivered. The main thing that concerns me here is the battery. It's 3,300 milliamp hours, which is the same as the OnePlus 5T. Now, OnePlus says that the Snapdragon 845 should save about 10% battery life, but the extra screen real estate has me worried that it's probably going to drain a little bit faster than that. So that's been a OnePlus 6. It's going to come in mirror black, midnight black, and a limited edition silk white color, and those colors will dictate what kind of RAM slash storage configuration you're going to be able to get. They'll be available May 22nd and will cost you $529, $579, and $629, depending on your configuration. So this phone is $30 more than the OnePlus 5T was at launch, but I think these upgrades are well worth it. Whether or not you think these upgrades are worth it are definitely up to you, and we want to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. Is there anything else related to the phone you want to see us cover when we get more time with this thing? Make sure you let us know your thoughts in the comments section below, and subscribe to all of our social channels, because of course, we are your source for all things Android.